Well, what's going on, chat? College Overwatch today on the NECC. We've got four games lined up for you. The first one is going to be Florida Atlantic versus Eastern Tennessee State University. I'm Yael Kreb co-casting with my good friend Neely, and we actually got to see ETSU play against St. Clair in their week one matchup. Uh, a little bit about what you're looking to see ETSU do today. In that previous game against St. Clair, they were running a split comp, and it seemed like it started to work for them, but a new patch came through. The meta's changed. Are you looking to see a similar thing? Uh, I'm... You kind of hope so, because they seem to be very strong on that Wrecking Ball, and they seem to have a guy that was pretty confident on Wrecking Ball. And the Diva, I think Random Person was the Diva, but and they, you know, Spawnk on the Farah seemed very, very comfortable, but now maybe moving to a little bit of a Ryan Arisa type of play style. Reaper's just been buffed along with Arisa, but on the other hand, Winston's been buffed, so maybe you do see some of the double bubble dive echoes as good as ever, so... I think especially in this circuit, it's just kind of play to your strengths and see what you can do. Play to your strengths indeed. ETSU, they're looking for their first win of the season today. And Florida Atlantic, they're one and one, looking to break that 500 barrier. But it's going to be an interesting map pool today. We've got Li Zhang followed by Hollywood and ending with Rialto in today's best of three series. No matter what, we're going to play all three maps, even if a team goes up 2-0. We're still playing the third map because map differential matters in this league. And a little interesting thing you said about Spock and that St. Clair game, he was one of the carries for this ETSU team. And today he's swapping over to tank, at least for this first map here on Li Zhang. That'll be very interesting. He seems to be one of their most flexible players. Definitely one of their, as you said, carry potential players. On the other side for Florida, I think we both talked about, we're going to be looking at Ayafi there. He, he seems to be a really good tracer player. And I think, believe i heard from weeks past he has dominated the competition so he's going to be looking to come in here and do a similar thing today and see if etsu can rein him in a little bit it's not going to be easy today that's for sure i think iafi is going to be a menace on the tracer it seems like he's one of the highest ranked players in the lobby the ranked ladder is drastically different from these team style settings i mean when you're on a college esports team mm -hmm. that hits scrim blocks every single day up until game day a week and you're just grinding the game with your teammates you can perform at a much higher level than you would on ladder say at your current rank so even though ayafi has got that stacked sr on the career profile we're going to see what kind of difference it actually makes but like you said looking for him to be on the tracer and have a ton of carry potential on that side it seems like it's going to be a damage dealing duo in today's game absolutely Anything else that you're going to be looking to see here? Maybe going into Li Zhang Tower? Because I believe our map pool is going to be Li Zhang Tower, Hollywood, and Rialto. I know Li Zhang, at least on Control Center, we're going to be getting some Ryan. And I know you and I both love some Ryan. I think we're going to get Ryan on Control Center. Other than that, though, I don't think we're going to see him too much. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see him on Control Center at all because both of these teams seem very comfortable on their wrecking ball. And also mm -hmm. Sigma and Roadhog composition. So they like to play kind of wonky tank lines and not your standard brawl. We saw ETSU go up against St. Clair, who runs exclusively brawl. And ETSU mm -hmm. almost never swapped to that comp. So I'm not actually sure how often they're going to run it. We'll have to see going into this first map. I'm rather excited, as I'm sure you are. And especially when you have Ayafi on the tracer, you're definitely going to be looking to maybe run some dives. So. Well, they're all going to have to be in top physical condition for this matchup. This is game day. This is what they prepared all week for. This is what the grind has gone into to get them to this point. And just a quick thank you to our sponsor for helping the NECC push on forward, pioneering college esports. Metapro Gaming is a full-service esports management, developmental, and consulting company that provides esports coaching, college esports management, arena design, and equipment. You can visit them at metaprogaming.gg to learn more. But Neely, I want to learn more about these two teams, and I cannot wait to get into this Li Zhang map. It looks like the two teams are ready, so we should be sending it in, and we're going to see which point will be unlocked first. Now arriving at Li Zhang Tower. Will be gardens control center. What are we going to have here? It's looking like Ryan's locked very early, but that's kind of just the joke around phase. So we'll have to see what they actually lock in. Snoozy managed to find his way off the map, but I saw a little bit of a preview there. It looked like maybe both teams are going to be coming out on the Reinhardt for this map. A little Reinhardt, maybe a little Junkrat. Good spam in the white room on the side. We're going to have to see what they actually roll out with, though. 
I'm not seeing anyone making any basketball shots or anything so far. It doesn't <laughs> seem like either squad is going to opt for that Sigma ball or Roadhog. We got the Ryan Zarya versus the Ryan Diva. Symmetra probably just to get out of spawn quickly. Going up against Sketch and Burmau on the May. McCree, oh, two Sims on both sides. We're going to equal out the speed here, Neely. I like it. This is going to be yeah. an absolute crash in the server room absolutely fast to the server room and on one side we're gonna have the diva which can eat the spam from the junk rat and then on the other side we're gonna have the zarya to help out the rhine a little more with burst damage all right there goes that sim tp to both sides and sketch this one to switch off of the sim over to the junk rat but i actually got a stick on this i'm actually trying to be down the front line right now mario blue is just battering away at this ETSG main tank to charge up that shot. He's got some fire strike opportunities to line up, but he's got some very cautious turn around this today while right now Florida Atlantic is doing a good job boxing out he gets from this point, not giving them an issue to stand on, not even in the front door. Spawn has his shield broken he already goes down, but a bat with a comes up is easy. Will it be enough? The Baptiste trades out. Gonzo gets two picks. Diva is be suited by Mario Blue and now it's like first fight one for Florida Atlantic. Yeah, that's a tough uh that's a tough look right there going up against the Symmetra. She's not played very, very often, but when she is set up, she's very hard to dislodge and she just shreds your shields down. Spawn just didn't have any room to look for. Also charging up Snoozy's window very quickly, but wasn't able to get the fire strike off to find any picks. Like you said about Symmetra being tough to dislodge, these turrets set up in this choke is going to just make it a nightmare for the Thrall to get through. They do a good job beating them down and landing a wall to cut off Mario Blue. The Riptire comes in, able to find Skeps with that one. It's a 5 versus 5 fight now, but Spawn is in a tough spot. Just trying to stabilize in this front line, eventually bursted down by the jump route on Florida Atlantic as they continue to stabilize on their first hand. Graviton Surge, uh, not quite sure what value that found, but hey, nothing out there. Nothing, nothing but, but net. net. Nothing I like it. net right there, but I love the the junk rat tire from Gonzo right there. The second his Reinhardt gets walled off and killed, he pops the tire to equalize the fight. Song bad, so bad mask is getting taken out early, and the rip tire coming out now, whirling around the team. Pops up over the top and gets shot down by the Zarya, but ETSU coming in huge shatter from Mario Blue, Blue countered by the V drop and the immortality field, and another shatter from Spawn. All the ults flying out here from ETSU, and it's looking at all ETSU in the kill feed right now. Big ultimate trade from both teams. Mario Blue going down left, not in the way of Spawn Shatter. As you confirm the fight victory there with that ultimate, but still could be an over here. They've got the grab and the jump window. That's going to lock up a fight in and of itself, but a lot of dangerous ultimates, including that rip tire coming online from Godzo. He's been farming on the jump grab so far. Big Maywall to get the tank split off, but they're unable to confirm any kills yet. Ball going down to the symmetric turrets. Tell him, able to get in on the kill from action as well. Florida Atlantic trying to bust through. Not quite sure how they were able to get all those confirmed so quickly without being completely through the choke, but they pour onto the point and they get the flip. Yeah, very swift flip there, and they fight off that Maywall perfectly right there. The Zarya just kind of walks into the left, avoids some damage, and they're able to keep everything together and save the Rip Tire and the Simwall. Simwall is an interesting ult. It's going to be hard to play into for ETSU. They did do a great job of converting that Maywall. They didn't let it stay up for the full duration. ETSU rotating it on these stairs. Rip Tire popped, but snipped out by Gonzo. He also picks up the kill on the sketch. Popping the Rip Tire for the Ego play. Able to find a random person on the Zarya. Overtime starting to tick down. Florida Atlantic in the lead. 1-0 after control center. Here on the Gen Tower. Flaps the grab on the middle pillar just to make sure no one's hanging around. That's where Lucio likes to live. And a quick first round going over to Florida Atlantic. It's had some life from both teams, though. You like to see that on control. Yeah, it was good. I liked seeing the brawl there on control center. It's interesting to open up on that map, but I can't imagine these two teams stick on this brawl for so long because PTSU, like you said in the previous game we casted of them, they were reluctant to play this comp, but that control center point does play very strong for brawl. Florida Atlantic really don't know what kind of cards they have up their sleeve, but it seems like Mario Blue, even though he played so stellar on that Reinhardt last round, he's going to be swapping over to the Wrecking Ball. What does that do 
on this point in particular that it can't quite get done on control center deal. Well, you can find some boops. There's a lot of space out in the courtyard area here that you can get some things done with a wrecking ball. They're going to switch Gonzo over to the Echo, but they're sticking with the Symmetra. There, I say it, just to get out of spawn, and now he's gone over to the Tracer, but ETSU sticking with the Brawl comp, setting it on point. It's a wonderful split comp set from Florida Atlantic. He's been just posing frogs from all angles around this point that has a ton of openings. Really, ETSU has to play very uncomfortably to stick on this frog comp here. They have to shield one direction at a time, and the flanks can just be taken from all over the place from Florida Atlantic. But right now, ETSU's Reinhardt Spawn is just chatting it up over on his right side, pushing through the white room. He's on his way to spawn on a road trip, on a mission, finds a couple, just has to deal with this Sigma now and batters him down with the help of random person. That is a slip take. First point here for ETSU. ETSU does a really good job right there. Sometimes teams are just going to go, I'm going to just sit on point and try to ride it out, but they know the point isn't the objective. It's to win the fight, and they use that Reinhardt to just walk right into flooding. I mean, that was a great little take there. It's hard for Sigma to stand up to a Reinhardt. He's such a good tank, but you just, even with the Brig, uh, Brigana to stand up with you, couldn't hold him off. And his point hold's looking nothing but strong. Yeah, Spawn knew it. If you could just step up to flooding in, you could batter her down. Because Sigma, like you said, does not stand a chance once Reinhardt gets close. So on the loose, slams it on Snoozy. That window will not be able to get used there for ETSU, but a slam coming through from Spawn. Sends them all down by the right side white room, and they're able to clean up three kills off of the back of that slam. Yeah, he finds one with the pulse bomb, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. As they poke, they're trying to back away here, maybe find an exit kill. Forces out the cryo freeze, kind of just a stalling fight here, not much going on. But Florida State starting to regroup, and starting to set up here. They don't have a speed to engage onto him. As good as Spawn could look, Blitz coming out early, lifts up two. One goes out of it, and the other is saved by the mark but Zach's going to fall early to Ayafi. Ayafi is in the back line, being a menace. Already burns it down the Brigitte, and now in on the melee. Hits the melee, can't quite finish off that kill, but Gonzo is doing all the work he needs to. The term of damage dealing on the point. Copies the Reinhardt, lays down a shatter, maybe even two, not quite sure. It just charges up so quickly, but three quick kills in the feed for Gonzo. That's all they needed. They just needed a Reinhardt. They forgot to pick it. They figured they'd you know, pick up a, a bargain Reinhardt and just take the point real quick. Good job on Gonzo. Ayafi's coming up on this pulse bomb at 93%, looking to set up a flank here with Mario Blue, maybe combo it with a slam on the engagement. The Brawl Comp playing very tight. It could be a massive pulse bomb. They connect this well. Looks like Mario's going in for the engagement. Gets stunned out by the Brigitte. The Brawl Comp pushing in. Burnout finds Ayafi with a headshot by way of an icicle. Round coming out now for Ford Atlantic. Just to try and stand here on this point as Mario Blue slams in the more time field. Has to come out to keep the front line alive. Graviton third blocks everybody up and spawn. Sends the hammer to a pair. Telemann Gonzo back to spawn. Snoozy finishing off Flood and Ring. That should be a flip here, but they've got to get Mario Blue and Ayafi off of this stubborn point. They're doing a great job right now. Just tickle tapping this point right now. There's a stick that goes over the back. And they're not done here yet, but it's going to flip. Gonzo zooms in to try to make something happen, but it's going to have to retreat now. Getting a nice little stall over to 56%, which was good considering they were probably going to lose it around 30. But ETSU is playing this very well. They're using their alt combos, and they've actually switched Zach over to the Lucio to engage with Spawn a little stronger, probably into this Sigma. Probably to engage and also to make sure he doesn't get spawn camp. Had to get back rather quickly so he wasn't ending up. Split, but it should be final fight here for ETSU. The window comes out, fire strike thrown through it, but unfortunately doesn't find any squishy. Zayafi opens up this fight with a kill on the burn now. Mario Blue goes down, the front line looking a little weaker. Funny Ying can't quite hold his footing. Jet able to pick up that turret kill. Silver Mask off of the map from Spock, and it seems like ETSU might just steal this guard around here on a very strong draw comp running the Sim Strap as well. Yeah, running the Simstrat, it's looking to work for them, but the grab comes out from the coffee, trying to find any damage into it. They are going to find two from Mario Blue, and now he's going to be contesting, but he's going to be taken right off the point, and ETSU is going to even this up at 1-1 one to -one here on Mijang Tower. Yeah, it just seemed like the front line blew up a little too quickly. Mario Blue was able to get back very quickly, obviously on that Wrecking Ball hero, but still on their entrance onto that final fight with overtime ticking down. You lose both of your tanks, you don't quite have much of a foot left in the game. 
But here we're on third point. Ali Zhang, a very close game so far, but both rounds have been rather one-sided. It's not like they've gone 99-99 yet. No, they have not gone 99-99 yet. And both sides are looking to opt for a uh, Symmetra here. But I don't know if both sides are going to choose to stick with the Symmetra. Last time Florida State swapped off just to get out of spawn quicker, Sketch decided to stick with it. And it's going to be a Brawl v. Brawl here. One's opting for the Reaper, one's opting for the May. Two different styles of play. One's more pick potential, but both are going to TP in and start this off fast. ETSU barely gets through the ground on, off the TP. Just a little bit first. That gives the Symmetra some time to set up the first. Mario Blue is frozen up, but they can't quite finish off that kill. Ayazi does team down random person. Mario Blue oversteps his bounds. Getting a little too close to Spawn. He finishes him off, but he seems like Florida Atlantic. No problem getting around to these cleanup kills. It's just a pesky Lucio Zach left on the walls, and Godzo shotguns him off. Mario Blue just looked like bait right there. He kind of just got lost out in the courtyard, didn't know what he was doing. But when he's out there, he takes two to chase him, and the rest of his team stays as this concise unit and just chips everybody else down as a team. Wonderful focus fire there from Florida Atlantic. This is a very tough point to get back in on that. Such a PP bomb, a little bit of funny business. Doesn't quite pay off there. Florida Atlantic retreats back to the point to hold firm. Spawn shatters, but it's not the play he was looking for. A shotgun will end him and send him back to spawn. So this wall coming out now by Ayaf, who's just looking to continue to stabilize here outside of the court. Not maybe pushing even farther in the spawn. This is to make the ETSU uncomfortable on the back foot. Use resources. Goblin goes down to a headshot, but I don't think Florida Atlantic is going to play scared anytime soon. Iaffe is still pushing his bound. Let's say Iaffe wants more. He's like, where are the tanks at? I want to go to the spawn door. I want to touch it. But sticking with the sim, it looks like they're going to go for the TP strat. But Florida State gets back and they TP in. The wall is going to come out and the window to boot. Trying to just lay in the damage and they've got all this free space to sit. Shatter flies out, doesn't find anything. Beat drop trying to finish it off here. A great counter beat from Zach there. And Hermau gonna find two with the high noon to cap it off. But a lot of alts fused right now from to ETSU. And can they even finish it? It looks like they're gonna be able to. Well, we saw that last round where it was a questionable overinvestment, but then ETSU just did not let go of the points the rest of the round. We'll see if they can hang on to it for the rest of this one to take map one here in the series. But Gonzo's Death Blossom is looking mighty fierce on the side of Florida Atlantic. Not quite sure what answers other than Burnout stun ETSU is going to have for that ultimate. And not much here, but it's going to be a grab and a blossom coming in here. Spunk might be able to counter with a shatter, but that's going to be their own dying wish. Grab comes out it's early. Slam. Huge <laughs> slam. Oh my god. That's going to counter the whole Graviton Surge. Godzo is going to be able to save his death blossom, luckily for him. But Spunk showing that carry potential. One week on Farah and another week on Reinhardt, and you'll love to see it. A team like Florida Atlantic was looking to bluff and then push through fast on the right side, but Spawn just didn't even turn around when he saw that TP, just continued to face front, and then just put a stop to that right side. Push the TP comes over the top into the window. Mario Blue goes down first. The Death Blossom pops by Gonzo, finds a pair. It's an even fight. Tanks and pushes. Gonzo goes down, trading up with the sketch. But it seems like ETSU remains on top of this fight, and the point continues to uptick in their percentage. Wow, ETSU making something happen here. It looked like a little bit of a miscommunication on this TP. They're actually not killing the TP yet. Now they're working on it. But half the team took the TP and then two just walked to the objective. I don't know what exactly happened there, but not everybody from Florida Atlantic was able to make it in. Bonk has another Earth Shab in this fight. I don't think they're going to be ready for it. It's going to be tough to hit with the signal, but it doesn't even matter. He lays it down, trying to batter away at these squishies. Finds a trio of kills, and this is the last hit here for Florida Atlantic on Li Zhang. They've got to find an answer in this next fight. Can they even get back to point? TSU with a wonderful showing here on these brawl comps, and Spunk is the absolute king of it. Huge there from ETSU. Two to one, taking the series up to 1 0. ETSU on map one of Li Zhang Tower. That was a very impressive win for ETSU coming back after being down in the first map or the first point of Li Zhang. Mm -hmm. But I think this was this was the man of the match here. This was just after that last Earth Shatter. Bonk able to get that triple kill after laying it down on the right side for two fights in a row. He just charged up so quickly. Nice fire strike prediction there too to end it. Very pretty play of the game.
one nothing so far etsu what does that tell you about these two teams neely uh anything can happen very close i think when you have a close control map it means for the rest of the series everything could kind of just be close if you win control it doesn't mean you're the better team necessarily control can kind of be a toss-up another team might be better on different map types florida atlantic might just not be that good on control god knows you and i aren't very good on control we like maps like hollywood that's going to be coming up next here hollywood very different from Li Jiang tower as well the first point plays pretty well for brawl but after that there's just so many high grounds on street phase it could be very tough to stick to that tank line and what I've seen from Spong so far is a far player going Reinhardt and then just making himself known in the lobby out of nowhere. So this was a team that played almost no brawl. They were very reluctant to play it against St. Clair, who pretty much one trick that comp, but they're very good at it. But now mm -hmm. Spong, he was like, you guys didn't even get a chance to see our brawl because I was too busy on DPS last match. But this time, I'm letting you all know what I can do on tank. And I love to see him on the Reinhardt, but on that street phase, like I was saying, hard to run it. Not quite sure what he's going to flex to if Reinhardt stops working for him. Yeah, I mean, he seems like a flexible character. I think I heard you say this, you know, for some people, they, they just main Overwatch. They don't main a character, they don't main a role. They just main everything in the game. And Spunk could be one of those kinds of players who's just kind of all around good, you know, at the game of Overwatch. So I wouldn't be shocked if he could play the Wrecking Ball, if he could play the Winston. I don't think they're going to get held up by them only being able to run one comp, especially since the first week we saw ATSU, they never ran Reinhardt because I think Spock was locked in on the far and they probably just didn't have another Rhine player. You could be right. I mean, we could have just seen ATSU maybe even show up, like not with the numbers to play the lineups mm -hmm. that they would like to, but I think, like you said, Spock might just main Overwatch, might just be the ultimate utility man for this team and just fill anything he needs to on these game days, but... Hollywood, if he opens up with Reinhardt, I understand it. But if he tries to force it all map, it could get him into some deep trouble because we've already seen Mario wants to switch over to the Wrecking Ball yeah. when the maps open up like Li Zhang Gardens did. And I think we can look to see a Wrecking Ball comp coming out from Florida Atlantic on this next map. Yeah, on any point. Maybe not first point defense. You still could easily pull it off. I know a defensive double bubble can be good. I don't know if any of these teams really run that comp. I don't know if that's considered any good right now. I know Winston got a buff, so I love to see it. But regardless, you can run dive on defense and offense on this point on just about all parts of the map. Maybe barring the last section of the map, you might not want to go for it. A lot of these last sections are a bit Ryan favored. You can run a good brawl. But on the upside is if you do want to force Reinhardt on second point, as much of a nightmare as it can be, there are those elevators you can put an entire team on and take it very quickly. No movement ability needed. No long stairs to walk up. You just cart your team over there, pop them up top. You can clear it. It just might be a little bit hard to move cart. And it's a little bit easier if you run things that just have abilities that can go up there and maybe net a kill for you. That elevator change you're talking about has been in the game for, I think, like six months now. Love it. it used to be really silly before that change was in. You just kind of had to go with the time of the game. But now you can coordinate very fast elevators and just send six mm -hmm. people up so quickly. It's just like an entire team buff if you coordinate your elevators. And it's weird mm -hmm. that coaches on every team, if they see their team isn't coordinating, getting yeah. onto the elevator, they're like, you guys need to get in the elevator at the same time. It's so important yeah. because it's so powerful if you take that position with six people in a flash. Yeah, and it does take a minute to reset too. You know, it's it has to go up. It does go up exceptionally quick now. I do love me a little, I love a little brawl comp on the, on the bridge there. I've played a few matches where it's two full brawl comps just on top of the roofs and it's the silliest thing you've ever seen because it's Ryan on a tightrope, but I love it either way. Yeah, it's honestly a circus fight whenever that happens. There's really no angles you can take from high ground to high ground either. It's just whatever Reinhardt goes down first in the duel on that catwalk. You're right. And I mean, any shadow you hit's going to be huge because if everybody's on it, everyone's on that thing. It's not like someone's off to the right, someone's off to the left. Or they're on this little two foot wide, uh, two foot wide bridge here. But we're looking like double shield versus double bubble at the moment mario blue opting for the winston which i like to see accompanied by the echo which i love that combo they seem to go together very very well the bubble from the winston can kind of set up a little extra space for that echo but on the defense we're going to be having the bab zen 
Hanzo double barrier with an Ash, the ultra spam out comp to run them. Mm -hmm. And I think double shield is a good look here attacking. Double bubble I think is a very strong investment into the second point of this map, Hollywood, but two shields. I mean, Orisa just got a recent buff for her fortify. She no longer takes critical hit damage. You cannot get a headshot multiplier from hitting her gigantic watermelon head whenever she has that cooldown. And she can be a complete force in the front line against any competition in the game now. Yeah, absolutely. And the fight's kind of starting out here. Mario Blue finds a pick on to random person, but it's going to get spammed down by the Zen and the and the Hanzo there. He's going to get rezzed up, and Sponk is going to fall to Ayafi on the Ash. Damage boosted, by the way, by the Mercy. I love this defense here. It's going to be very hard to cart a double shield around all these high grounds where Winston gets a free engage, he gets a bubble engage, and it's just going to be a nightmare. And then once. Uh, Sobo Mask gets his nano boost up. It, he's not. He's gonna get a uh, nano boost right onto that Winston. Yep, you found your way back here. Oh, I, I am back in the game. Flooding okay. in has just gone down, but Rez right back up. I tell him Winston jumping in. But I like what you're saying about this double bubble on defense because it seems like after that first play, Florida Atlantic is not afraid to play where they trade out Mario Blue's life to make some space with this comp, and that's the risk they have to take to make it work. Right now, he's going right into the front line. You got Gonzo copied on this Sigma, just trying to get a flush. At a light speed. Right now, he's got cooldown kind of lengthy. Oh my. He get this all out. Lifts up four, slams him down. Two kills confirmed so far. Trying to find the Hanzo and Zach on the Zenyatta on the way out. And they're only going to get strong. No, bad for the team right there. Never mind. Stardust. That is the strong man ult right there. You just pick him up, put him down, and it was a copy. It, they didn't even have to run their own Sigma right there. Great copy there from Gonzo to just slam everybody to the ground. And right now, you're going to have a lot of contest as well from the defense of Florida Atlantic here. They have the Nano, they have the Primal. That means Winston can basically stay alive forever. It's starting off with the Nano boost. Monkey just poking and prodding. Bob's going to fly in here and another engage coming in from Mario Blue. He's not going to have his bubble. He's a bit scared. Yeah, he's not a Primal. Not afraid. Ooh, he got halted off of that jump and it almost felt disaster, but Gonzo just landed like three headshots onto Sketch and just took him down before he was able to finish off the kill. But Mario Blue was rolling in very deep right there. They're playing this double bubble about as aggressively as you can. Yeah, he didn't have his own personal bubble on his own cooldown, which is always risky no matter how nano boosted up you are. And he, got, he gets halted out of his jump, which is a nightmare if you're Winston. It's very hard to do, so good halt on spawn just didn't really net what he was hoping for. On all switch on both sides, Gavicon's here against Supercharger, committed on opposite sides. Dragon Strike thrown through with high burn out. Going to split up for Atlantic on the right side of the point, but the Primal Rage from Mario Blue comes in looking to just CC around ETSE and the Supercharger is taken down, damage no longer amplified. Dramatic Flux coming out again from Gonzo. That's the Echo Top and Mario Blue able to Primal down Burnout and it seems like the front line here is just too much anytime Gonzo gets that Echo Top. I have to call campus security on Mario Blue because he just abused that Hanzo on the corner over there. He, he got a Mega, but ooh, that was... That was a great primal there from Mario Blue. Just had absolute control of the Hanzo and just put him away. Just split him from his entire team. No way you can help him. It's so tough to juggle, too. I mean, that is a very too close for comfort kind of play. Now the Nano gets slapped onto Mario Blue again. The engagement so strong with this double bubble, especially with this Echo. This is just a transformed Florida Atlantic team that we saw in Lee Jang. Gobbler just raining it in from off top. Incredible play landing. Just an absolute series of headshots in front of two kills. And this one, two seconds left here. Maybe the wrecking ball gets to the point in time, but no, Sonk will not end up making it. And this is what we talked about. I mean, what do you do when the brawl stops working on a map like this? Well, they opted for the double barrier, and it didn't pan out. You know, I know someone I used to talk to a long time about this game. What should we do? Uh, two shields is pretty good. It doesn't pan out here for Sponk and a random person, but they... They can full hold. If you're ETSU, yeah. you're saying, hey, just full hold this. We take the next map. Maybe we can draw it out. It's obviously going to be tough. You know, full holding any point is very difficult. Florida Atlantic made it look easy right there with the double bubble. But they didn't have a lot of answers, it didn't seem like, for this double bubble. And I kind of hope Florida Atlantic sticks to this, even if 
a map maybe a little bit more Ryan favored because they played it very, very well, rotating the nano boost and the primal, making it so that Winston has very few engagements except for the first and maybe one in the middle where he doesn't have an ultimate to bail him out from a dangerous situation. I mean, it doesn't seem like Mario Blue cares if he's in a dangerous situation either. He was just playing like, I'm totally fine dying because I know you guys are all going to be looking at me and we're going to get three kills just lightning quick right after I go down. And they were just playing with the Winston sacrifice strat. And I'm a huge fan of that. Godzo was able to clean up a lot right there. But I think, like you said, two shields pretty good. Didn't quite work for ETSU, but they're in a spot in this match where they have to remember that they are the team that won the first map. They can hang with this Florida Atlantic team, even though they just got full held. It's not like Florida Atlantic is a team that can blow ETSU out of the water. ETSU, they're up in this match. Yeah. And Sweden's strong man making an appearance. Burmau on the Torbjorn turret on the high ground. It's got two shields and it doesn't miss. If you check the stats, it will not tend to miss, but it goes down right there. Big pick on a Gazo as a Discord slapped onto the Echo and Sketch gave it a burst and down. Mario Blue goes for a dive up top to make some space so Telen can get that res off, but doesn't quite make it down off the high ground alive, and it seems like Florida Atlantic are looking for a quick reset here, but Flooding is just caught a little too overextended on that left side, still not able to get out, but still. Three minutes on the clock, plenty of time for a reset for Florida Atlantic. Yeah, Mario Blue was trying to finish up on Soba Master's uh, Antinate. I think he hit four or five right there, and I thought that was going to spell disaster for this double shield. But I don't even think they got the e board out, so they're still going to have that to save it. And Mario Blue picking a little bit more of a rugged tank than Winston in Wrecking Ball, but they're going to be going for the same style of comp, just not the Winston pick. Slam coming out onto the high ground early with the bubble. Godzo right off top with that focusing beam, trying to confirm a kill, but the HP for ETSU all stays relatively high. I'd like to see Godzo take a little bit different of an off angle, maybe get behind him. He ends up getting rocked right there, falls to one HP. Random person finishes off that kill all on their own. That was a phenomenal play from Sigma to take out the opposing Echo. Godzo's been popping off this entire game too. I mean, that is no slouch on DPS. Oh, absolutely not. And now the Valkyrie coming out to try to boost this Florida Atlantic team in, but a supercharger on the other side, just equally and if not more dangerous, trying to ward off the enemy team. Iappy finds Spawn, which is the main tank right there. Trades going back and forth, and Bomb gets sent into the cafe. He is a tough customer, and he is not taking any time on his order. Yeah, if you just closing that one out with the Bob at the end, throwing it right on the point. Bob also, just like a Torb turret, doesn't miss very much. Absolute mm -hmm. sharp shooter. And that's going to be the round right there. We're all tied up at one. Godzo gets to play of the game here on Echo. No surprise at all. This guy was going nuts this match. Oh, yeah. That was gigantic right there. You gotta love the, the lift from Gonzo, and then you're able to go beam down your own half HP targets. It doesn't really get much better than that. Yeah, insane value on that copy. Lifting up four, getting two confirms right there, having all of his cooldowns to just chase down the rest of them, secure that full hold, and that's what tied the game up. I mean, full hold, that makes it a pretty, pretty easy route to a win to tie this one up, but we're gonna be headed to Rialto next. Again, completely different map than the previous one. Uh, dive can work, but I think of this one as more of a poke type map. Maybe even Reinhardt gets thrown back into the mix. Some strong corners can be held down on this, Neely. Yeah, I mean, when Goats was played, obviously it was one of the better Goats maps here, Rialto, right? But it's not Goats anymore, so it's a little bit different. You don't have as much ruggedness with your comp. So double shield does favor really well. A lot of long sight lines. But again, if you're Florida Atlantic and you're feeling really good on this double bubble, I don't really see why you wouldn't run it. I, I get there's not as many high grounds, especially that first point. There's really only one on that first corner that you kind of get to engage and then one right at where you capture the first point for that whole first point. So there's a lot of open area, lots of places for Winston to get shot before he can dive, which makes his life absolutely terrible. So it's kind of a toss up right now, I feel like what, what these teams are going to run. It's tricky to decide on what to play. And again, I'm just looking at Spawn. Reinhardt worked well first map. Again, Hollywood, not really a Reinhardt map. That's why we didn't see him played. But do you just go back to the Brawl, see if you can catch this double bubble when it jumps on top of you and cleave it down with that Reinhardt damage? It's a little more effective, I think, if they were to just counter this with a hard Brawl that sticks together. Less vulnerable targets are hanging open for Godzo to just come in and focusing beam down in just a second. I don't know. Maybe they go back to it.
Alrighty, well, we are going to jump right back into map three, but first a little five minute break as the teams get some time to recuperate, re-strategize, and get ready for the action. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it. All right, we're back from that quick break. We're going to be headed into map three in just a minute. Again, that is Rialto. And we're in a very interesting game here in this best of three series between Florida Atlantic and Eastern Tennessee State University. Neely, 
Again, Brawl has gotten to work for ETSU so far. Florida Atlantic, though, answered so strong with that double bubble. We were talking at the break. Do you think Florida Atlantic just continues to run this hyper-aggression comp into ETSU and make them search for answers? I, I think that they should. Obviously, I am not the coach of Florida Atlantic. So, you know, I'm sure they've game planned this. I'm sure they've scrimmed basically all the comps. I'm sure they've scrimmed double bubble. And maybe it doesn't work. So who knows what they come out with. But I would like to see double bubble because ETSU really didn't have any answer for it. But I do think ETSU could answer it if given the task, especially on point one of Rialto. There's a lot of open space, as I had said. And as you play in that open space, you give Winston no real good dive location other than the dead center of your team and in a big open field. So not a lot of room. And it seems like a big part of this double bubble comp working so well is Iafi and Godzo on these DPS. It seemed like they were on Tracer and Echo. If they play double bubble, like likely no switches from them. Those are two very meta DPS picks right now. Also, uh, just a quick heads up if you're watching, the teams are going to switch sides. So Florida Atlantic is now going to be the red team and ETSU is now going to be the blue team defending first here on Rialto when we get into it. But again, what I was saying is the DPS on Florida Atlantic, Godzo and Iafi, they were just crushing in their jobs. I mean, it would seem like Mario Blue would go in on the engage and the follow-up was immediately there. They had their cooldowns. They were ready to commit the resources onto every single fight. And I can't even tell who the shot caller on this comp is. I would like to say it's Mario Blue, but with how just on point the follow-up was on that last map, it really could be any of them. I can't tell where the leadership's coming from. Mario is probably calling when he jumps. But I'm sure, you know, as I said, they scrim these maps. They kind of know their setups. And Mario is probably just waiting for Ayafi and Gonzo. One, you're waiting for Ayafi to have, or I'm I'm sorry, Gonzo to have his fly. And you're waiting for, for Ayafi to kind of get in on a side, like those stairs on uh, on Hollywood that we had just seen, and kind of set up for his dive. You kind of want everything to crush together at once when that Winston lands, so that even if he does die, uh, you, you know, the space is used and uh, hopefully finds a couple of trade outs in your own favor on the defense was good because I think they were able to res Mario blue one time, which maybe that's why they ran the mercy. You know, they're like, hey, you can be a little bit frivolous here with your life. You can uh, you can die on us, but we'll get you back, you know, hopefully, you know, with the little team support and hopefully assuming that the dive worked and you trade out properly. And it seems like that is what they're playing for. It's just those trades. But if you're ETSU, what should you switch the target prioritization to off of Winston onto something else maybe? Just so it seems like Florida Atlantic, they're playing to trade out that Winston and they're confident that they can get more picks than you're going to if you're focusing the Winston first. Maybe because it takes a little bit longer to kill him than a squishy target. Should they maybe switch to the Mercy or the Echo with their focus? Because... I don't know. The trades don't seem to be in the favor of ETSU. Yeah, well, I do know for sure when it comes to that monkey comp, you could, if he's, I think one thing that I've seen from Mario is that it's not like he, I don't know if he's diving back lines necessarily. It seems like he is diving front lines and forcing him to be the issue. So on your note there, he could or you could maybe ignore him just heal your tanks up and then focus the true threats of course you know that is godzo and ayafi i really wish these first things that we got to see on screen here what they what they would actually run to you see a genji and you're just like please do it just oh, I know. just give me just give me the genji i want to see it yeah in the waiting for players part of the team assembles <laughs> yeah a little oh, again, just to see one it. more time if you were away during the little break we took teams have switched sides florida atlantic is on the red side and etsu is over on the blue side so defending first this time is etsu yeah i i think that was more for me than it was for everybody else but you know might as well keep everybody on the same page of course because it does take a second to be like oh yeah that's right now they're red now they're blue i've grown to know what these colors are but now they have all swapped up and the red team the mean team is uh, Florida State or Florida Atlantic University, my bad. A little bit of comp changes here. Iafi, I mean, the attackers could be trolling here too. They've got a little bit extended amount of time to select their heroes, but on a wrecking ball for Mario Blue, that seems fairly standard. But Iafi going on the Doomfist, maybe the Ash, not quite sure. 
One thing for sure is Godzo sticking to this Echo, and it seems like the answer that ETSU have come up with to counter that pick is Burn now on this Widowmaker. Do you think that's an effective pick here on this map on defense? Uh, it can be. There's a lot of long sight lines here, so if you're going to counter something that flies, Widow is technically your best option. Maybe not the most versatile. Maybe you'd pick a Curry, but Widow, not the worst option, and a lot of shields to set it up. But a ball to pester you in the back, and it's looking like... Uh, Mario Blue is trying to set up to do that. Mario Blue really good. It's a three engage before skirting on out of there. It seems like the double shield top for ETSU is choosing to set up very firmly on this blue wall corner. But Ayashi comes in, rolls a headshot in the burnout, taking him down. That opens up a lot of space in the skies for Godzo, who's happy to take it and beam down Zach. It seems like it's anyone's game here before Atlantic still presently attacks with these tank cooldowns. Kind of just split off spawns. He's got the Discord on him. Godzo takes him down. Takes down both tanks instead. Three minutes on the clock and still Florida Atlantic. They're up to pace on this comp just like they were on Double Bubble. Yeah, they're doing very good on it. It's a very similar style of comp. You know, Wrecking Ball doesn't really need the Zari bubble, so you can pick a more uh, more self-sustaining tank. Maybe one that sits with your supports can get a little bit of use out of the Discord and the and the window here. Oh, and another pick from Ayafi to open it up onto Sketch. Ayafi has kind of opened up both of these with TNTs and headshots. Yeah, he likes to throw the TNTs right at the slams that Mario Blue is sending in. And it seems like both of the headshots he's found so far have been on targets that were slammed up. And the crowd control not quite able to move or dodge those headshots coming in from so Ayafi. Already looking like he's going to be able to hit the shots on hit scan all match long. Sketch. Burma are going to have a tough cast one to win the duel against the hit scan and two to take the echo out of the sky but Burma opens things up here with a pick on the Pelham taking the support down really does take a lot of the aggression out of the comp a random person goes up a little bit too far taken down by Abby again but it seems like ETSU still has all the cleanup work in their hands Abby was hoping that Bob would do something but he kind of just gets dusted down rather quickly there the supercharger went out, which boosts up everybody's damage, and everyone just focuses them down very quickly. They don't want Bob to swing anything back, because as we have pointed out, he doesn't miss. But Burmau trying not to miss here. He can see everybody through the walls. Burmau's got the intel this fight. Zach's got the transcendence, and it seems like there's a lot of alt on the board here. It's going to be a very colorful fight coming up. It's going to be on Zach. That also they are still pressing on the pedal, pushing into the front line of ETSU, getting behind random person, taking his off angles, and eventually he'll be bursting him down. And it looks like Spock is coming back home right now. He's back onto the Reinhardt. Something we all like to see. I don't know how he's gonna deal with this comp that he's looking at. Not a lot of answers Ryan can come up with, but he gives you a little bit more shield. It kind of creates more of a front line for your team. Something to say, this is where I draw the line. Yeah, Ryan can just keep your team stable in one spot for a little bit longer than any other tank, but it seems like the comp that Florida Atlantic is playing, they're not going to let you stay in one spot for too long. They're going to bring you all over the map, split you up with these ultimates like these wrecking ball mines are being thrown in by Mario Blue. I have to just taking the main angle, pummeling in bullets on the hits again. Sketch getting a counter kill on the Mario Blue that takes down the engagement tactics for Florida Atlantic. It seems like the after he's dead here, looks like they can find a quick kill, but he doesn't seem like they'll be able to sketch all over the kill feed. That's his force of the fight. Trying to get a fifth on Iaffe on his way out. And win the duel here in the hotel, able to. And they're able to turn that one right back. They're switching to two hit scan. He's off the tour. Burmau is now on the ash. A little bit more versatile, too versatile hit scan to deal with flying characters. And Gonzo says, I'm going to get on to a Hanzo now. And Mario Blue is swapping over to the Ryan. The third point, everybody's favorite, is usually a Ryan favorite. And this one is a doozy when you get to where that card is. It's very hard to push past that. And Zach opens it up on the DPS superstar that is I have. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, Zach with a great shutdown play, but really the attackers 
don't have many options. I mean, they just walk up and like uphill into so much sand. I mean, they, they even had the window to shut them down too. The pick already came through from Jack to be able to find another little volley on the Gazo this time. But it's just a downhill battle for the defense and the attackers just have so much space. And it's hard to just get all the way there, especially when you're running no Lucio because you have to hold on to these pull off minutes. But maybe there'll be enough this next fight to get them through the engage and get them a couple kills. Yeah, you're going to have the Transcendence here for the grab. It's going to be coming up and the bomb to open things up. That's one of the best tanks in the game. It's my favorite window coming out to pressure everybody back. And Transcendence trying to keep everybody alive after Snoozy goes down. High Noon coming up on the right side. Finds nobody and gets absolutely shut down. Shatter from Spunk finds nobody. And just tons of balls going back and forth. But it's all red in the kill feed. And that is Florida Atlantic marching towards the finish right now. Blue had a nice little play to beat that Bob off to the left side so they couldn't find any value, but they're still not out of this fight. Sponge did to roll back onto the point, but the Discord is going to make his health go down awfully quickly. The Graviton Surge will cinch up a couple of members of Florida Atlantic, but they do manage to finish the map here with two minutes, six seconds on the clock. A fairly hefty time bank. It seems like they're looking to keep their momentum that they built on Hollywood. They do get grab, but <clears throat> right where they want to be on cart, putting it home in the end zone so to speak and with a pretty good amount of time two minutes and six seconds is really good on these payload maps it's not un it's not insurmountable here for etsu but it did kind of seem like when you watch that the only time that florida atlantic really got slowed down was on this third point and sadly spunk was not able to carry with that earth shatter he opened it up early in the fight gets blocked by mario blue and i know that brought a lot of life to etsu when spunk was able to land those huge earth shatters seems like on the side of the attackers they're going with a sombra look this time that is a hero that it doesn't change much in terms of how your team can brawl with the mccree and the lucio and the reinhardt and all that but it really does commit you to those Brawl fights when Sombra has that EMP. That EMP just opens the door so wide for Brawl comps to speed boost in. And there's really nothing quite like it in the game of Overwatch. I don't remember who said it, but no matter how good you are at this game, at the end of the day, once you get EMP'd, everybody gets turned into a lower ranked player, you know? You could be GM and all of a sudden you're plat because you can't press those abilities and you can't really do anything because of EMP, but also this should shut down Mario Blue a little bit if he goes for those hard engages, and that could be what they're trying to do, even though Burmao is poking around the back line for this Zenyatta early. Can shut down both tanks very well if Sigma does get hacked. It's not like Orisa. His shield does actually go away while Orisa is able to stay up. And right there we see him taking down Soba Mask, a very vulnerable target that Sombra can just go invisible and flank, pop up right next to him, just place a mag of headshots into him, and Soba Mask Unfortunately, he finds out how possible that is in that first duel. Ayafi able to get the headshot kill on the random person. That should slow the attackers down a little bit, but Spark doesn't get too phased by it. Not too phased, but all they're slowly just kind of taking this part, doing the sailboat strat, just kind of moving slowly along. Godzilla on the top right just finds the beam on the snoozy early, but Soba Mask goes down again. Spark also meeting his demise by it. Ayafi and Talon find Zach. And now a little bit of stability coming out here from Florida Atlantic. And this is right where you want to do it. Lots of open space. The only way you're really going to be able to get anything done here for ETSU is to hit a nice speed boost, maybe find, you know, rush on to flooding here and try to take out Sigma really quick. But Soba Mask into a duel early, kind of mid fight, but Mermau finds it. The wow. feel is just not there. They're just not ready. He's done it three times now and they don't have an answer. Gotta help Sigma Mask out a little bit more. Gonzo does focus and beam down Burnout on his way out. Able to catch up to that Sombra and get him sent back to spawn. But a random person steps up with Spawn in the front line to find two kills. Sketched able Love to it. finish off Ayafi near the point. And the card should be rolling very, very close to the first point finish line here, but it's still anyone's game as the Echo copy comes through nearly. It's pinned right out of it. That was a, their good chance to swing it back. Spunk gets blown up. Noon comes out, just kind of weakens everybody up, breaks some shields a little bit. Hack comes out onto Mario Blue and the stun. Huge Emort right there to keep him up. All intents and purposes, he should have gone down. EMP finds just about everybody. And now they just got to kind of rush into this room and try to find some kills here. And they're going to do that. Ayafi's bomb goes down in no time due to that window. 
Burmout trying to make some plays happen. Zach drops the beat over the top. Graviton Surge unfortunately thrown right into a Sigma Shield. Shatter lands out of the front line. Can they finish off flooding in? Unfortunately for ETSU, they're unable to, and it seems like the payload will remain parked with 0.69 meters. Nice. Left to go here on the first point. Yeah, I, I think Spawn kind of knew they had invested every single ultimate that they had, and that if he was going to use his, he might as well try to put it into the fight where they've done the most, and he kind of comes up a bit short there, gets taken down very quickly, and now etsu is going to be pushing into wrecking ball alt and flux and you can combo these and it is a brutal one brutal and so satisfying to spectate lifting them up into a minefield when you slam them down and etsu they blew Great all path. their ultimates last fight very good pathing to avoid a lot of the damage but a random person eventually does catch a couple of orbs volleyed out by soba mask taken down sketched also blown up by a dynamite the wrecking ball mine make the point impossible to touch gravitic flux comes out on the coast side slamming three down and these kills are just it's just a matter of time they're so low tell them it's quick work of the rest of those they just play this high ground that's above the point so well too with the tracer with the ball baptiste at any time he gets in a little bit of danger can go up there soba mask has all these places he can hide even though he kind of got the you know yeah he's looking for him right now even though he got the sombra to find him a few times he is just trying to find her right now it is an all-out search fest but she's not going to be there high noon comes out able to find flooding that's going to open it up here for the attackers but burnout does go down before getting too much done i happy starting to pop off now finds two let's bob loose and he's oh. got a window right in front of him gonzo finishes the game there locking up the victory with a triple kill with the pulse bomb Florida Atlantic University winning this one two to one. Yeah, that was a great little pulse bomb to cap it off. Do we get to see it again? No, we're going to see the huge lift from flooding here. This was a large lift. I can't even remember. Did it? Ah, yes, this one on the right side. It's so hard to push into this comp once it gets ultimates. And it, especially for a rush, no matter how fast you go, they have ball to slow you down. They have lift just a nightmare once you start locking those up but florida atlantic going up two to one to take the victory over etsu and if you had that you could talk to after this game from florida atlantic just to kind of figure out some answers see how their team is able to do what they do who do you think that would be who really impressed you today for them i mean we both talked about gonzo and ayafi a lot i don't know if you have a pick from them we could talk to mario blue just because you know we, we were curious if he does most of the calling or if his dps do we could probably get that answer from anybody so between the two dps who would you want to see i, I kind of liked ayafi there i liked godzo but i would be more than down to talk to ayafi also mario but i feel like ayafi is the one who really sets the tempo for this team yeah whoever we can get i would take any of those guys but a very what? good job by Florida Atlantic. I mean, they lost the first map, Lijiang Tower. They go down in the yeah. series 0-1. And then they're just able to come back in and win the next two very decisively. You, you're you one of the Overwatch players who think that control functions very differently from the rest of the game modes in the game. Why do you think that is? Well, it's just, it's just more deathmatchy, you know? It's not like this three points of where you have to cross this distance, you know? neither team starts on attack or defense both teams kind of start neutral and it really comes down to who wins that first fight different comps are played like lots of reinhardt was played by both sides that was the only time we saw florida atlantic on rhine and I'm, i think you know a good thing for etsu here is if we do find ourselves in a more ryan favorite meta etsu will be more than happy to oblige that and florida atlantic might actually see a downturn in their season if they have to play ryan because as dominant as they were when it was Ryan v. Ryan, they looked very even and it even lost around. Yeah, they did. It was a very even game. And I think one of the things that made it a little bit more uneven for Florida Atlantic was the use of Echo, one of the best DPS heroes in the game. Godzo, of course, on that hero. We are going to get to talk to Godzo in just a few here as he works his way into the Discord call. But what does Echo bring to the table other than literally everything in Overwatch? Because it's just massive amounts of damage, a hero with mobility that can fly and copy any hero in the game once he has that ultimate online. But what playstyle best suits Echo that was just being the head-scratching deal-breaker for ETSU today? 
Uh, I don't know. I was just, they were playing a lot of hit scan, and so I was just playing around corners, spamming my stickies, making sure they didn't have shield or always had to heal someone. And it just, while they're kind of distracted with me, my team can do make space and make plays around it. When you, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was say, so when you guys say on uh, Hollywood there, when you guys are setting up those dives, I know usually you want to have both the Winston cooldown and the fly cooldown for Echo to go in at the same time. Who kind of makes that call? Is that you or is that um, Mario Blue? Uh, it's So what I do is Mario calls, tell me when they're coming through choke. And then I, like in the air, am able to scout it. And then I say they're coming through now. Or me or flooding or someone and then mm -hmm. we just go in afterwards and just go together all right so it's kind of a team that's kind of what i was thinking it was probably just like a team effort yelp do you have anything else i do so overwatch obviously has a competitive game mode where any casual player can just hop on and play the game competitively but as a part of a college esports team what what's the difference between joining up on an esports team playing together with the same people as opposed to just grinding the competitive ladder like a lot of players choose to do uh so when it's just teamwork really like in these you try really really hard to practice plans with your team and coordinate things but in comp sometimes you're just blasting music and playing your own style and it's usually just like getting picks and then popping off and then flaming your team if you somehow still lose right i like that last part you threw in because that's yeah. the most honest thing anyone's ever said <laughs> in an interview <laughs> uh yeah. one last thing i wanted to ask you and then neely i'll toss it back to you is what do you think wasn't going right on Li Zhang? because you guys looked so good on those second and third maps but Li Zhang, you just weren't quite able to close out the map uh sim we sim. are not good at sim comps and what happened was map one, uh, we were able to do it c just because I really like Junkrat. And I think I'm really good at Junkrat, but I'm not great at Reaper. And then the sim is just, we're not great at it yet, but we will be. Like working with the TP, making plays with it. But right. And then map two, we just decided to try and play dive, but it was hard to get in with the turrets on point. And we mm -hmm. were very split, trying like pincer and attack, but it was just hard. Mm -hmm. And then map three, we just tried to mirror and play the game, and it worked sometimes, but I think they just had more practice with it and were able to outclass us a little bit. Well, you still got plenty of time to practice, a lot of season, a lot of life left. Neil, you got one question left here for Godzo? I, I actually got nothing. I think you asked all the things that I had a question about, especially revolving around the Zhang, so I'll toss it right back to you, Yelk. Well, Gonzo, congratulations on getting the victory today. Your team improves to above 500. That's very nice to see. So make sure you send our best regards to all of Florida Atlantic. Yeah, will do. Thank you. All righty. Well, chat, thanks for hanging out for our first of four matches tonight. Again, I've been Yell Kreb, co-casting with me, my good buddy Neely, on this one between Florida Atlantic and ETSU. Florida Atlantic, the 2-1 victors in this one. Neely, anything else to say? before we send them off to the next match. I'm just excited for next Thursday, and I'm sure you're, because I believe you're casting the next match, correct? Sure am, man, sure so, am. Good luck, to Yelk. good luck to Yelk on the next cast here, and uh, you know, stay tuned. Yeah, it's going to be Howard versus University of Northern Alabama. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just about a half an hour with that second match. Take it easy, chat.
What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.